Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we recognize all of you have given your offerings. Um, the baskets are by the doors on your way in or out. And we thank those that have given online or dropping them off at the church. We pray a blessing on all the offerings that they will truly be used for the ministry of Jesus Christ in this community. Amen. This is called uh, Here I Am to Worship. This is a, an old Chris Tomlin song made with a uh, passion worship. It talks about uh, how Jesus is the light of the world and, um, and how we are ready to worship. Step down. Say that 
Would you pray for me as I pray for you? Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful everywhere. Open our hearts and our minds to hear the particular message that you have for each one of us today. And I pray, Lord, that the words I say are not my own, but are yours. Amen. Well, when Marilyn saw the title of my sermon, Show Off, she goes, I have the perfect picture for you to use to start your picture. So, Marilyn, show them your perfect picture. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, we won't do a picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> she had a perfect picture, and so you can ask her about it afterwards. How about that? A lot of times when we think about show-offs, we don't think about them as being in a real positive light, do we? Oh, my gosh, they're a show-off. Uh, you know, it's sort of a, eh, nah, not good thing. But I'm thinking Jesus is talking to us about being a show-off, that we are to be show-offs of faith. And so that's what I want to take a look at a little bit today in a positive light. So we're going to follow up with our scripture. And our scripture comes from Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, this is scripture that follows what we've been talking about the last few, last two months of the Beatitudes. This is the immediate scripture following that. The Beatitudes, as we've learned, are, are Jesus' guidance to us as to how we're to live our life as people of faith. It is the traits, the guidance, the qualities, the values that we are to display in living our life when we say we are a follower of Jesus. That we look to the Beatitudes and say, how am I doing? Well, this image this uh, about salt and light follows the Beatitudes, and Jesus is being very, very clear. The confession of faith that we are all to make as Christians is not to be private, but is to be public. We are to be public witnesses of who Jesus Christ is for each one of us. And, and I'm not just talking about public witnesses in in our circles, where it's comfortable. You know, when we're in our church family or, or with church friends, we talk about faith and it feels very comfortable to do that. But Jesus is saying, talk about faith when it's not so comfortable, when you're outside of those comfortable circles. And where you may be welcomed, people may say, okay, yeah, that's good or you may be ridiculed as a result. No, I'm, that's not me, and I can't believe you're going that way. But Jesus is saying that if we're to truly live a holy life, we have to be, here's your word for today, conspicuous. All right? We have to be conspicuous. And this image of salt and light Salt and light are images of being conspicuous with our faith. Think about salt. Salt is sort of conspicuous. 
if you are eating something that doesn't have salt in it, you know it, right? Or if you are eating something that has too much salt in it, you know it. How many of you have gone to the store and accidentally bought a can of, can of low salt vegetables? And you pick it up and you sit down to eat and you go, oh, what is wrong with this? And you pull out the can and go, oh. You know immediately. I know one time I was pumpkin pie. And without thinking, I, the, it called for a half a, tab, uh, half a teaspoon of salt. And I put, read it wrong and put in a teaspoon of salt. And I realized it when I got at the end of it, right before I was going to put it in the oven. I thought, you know, what's a half a teaspoon of salt? It won't make that much difference. It made a lot of difference, let me tell you. It was, I could not eat it. It went in the trash can. Salt is conspicuous when it's there and when it's not there. And Jesus is talking about using salt. Salt was very prominent in this time in terms of preserving food. And it was also used sometimes in healing. Salt preserved food and kept it from going bad. And Jesus is saying, we need to be out in the world preserving society, keeping things from going bad. We're to, as Christians, we're to be visible witness, conspicuous out there to show that how we're, everybody is to live and to set that example. And I'm not talking about so much being conspicuous in government um, teachings and so forth, because History has shown when the church is involved in government, it goes really bad, really bad. And so I'm talking about our personal witness in communities and the witness of the church in our communities to make a difference, to be conspicuous. So if we go back to the Beatitudes for just a minute and our how we are to live as Christians, we are to be influencers, influencers. And we're to influence other people, but we're also to hold people accountable for how they are living. And that's not always a popular place to be at. Salt is also used for healing. How many of you, when you have a, a sore and you jump in the ocean, you find out all the places that you have sores because they start going, you start going, oh man, they start stinging. That when that salt water hits a sore, you know where the sores are. Salt, sometimes, or you soak something in salt water that you've injured. Salt has a healing proponent to it. And so, when we are following Christ and being conspicuous in our faith, our saltiness, many times we're being conspicuous in our healing approach to people around us and to our, our nature of bridging and being a bridge and helping in times of discord. Show that there's a different way. That's how we can be really salty and healing at the same time. Our salt and our light come from who? From Christ. We invite, when we started to um, the sermon, I said, come Holy Spirit, fill us. It's that sense of the Holy Spirit filling us with the presence of Christ. And it's so important that, that we stay focused on that and not to become contaminated. It talks about salt losing its saltiness. Well, the way it loses its saltiness is by becoming contaminated. Becoming contaminated and with other elements coming in until the point that it, it just can't do what it needs to do anymore. And it, as it said in our scripture, gets thrown on the ground and walked on. Well, what are the things that contaminate us? There are so many things I'm going to ask, I'm going to meddle here for a minute, all right? Do I have your permission? I'll, I'll let the online people say yes. How, how many of you um, read your Bible 
the same amount of time as you watch the news? No? How about two times that you, uh, you watch the news and read your Bible? You know, two times news, one time Bible. How about five times news, one time Bible? Ten times news, one time Bible. You getting the picture of what I'm saying? Where are we getting, where are we getting contaminated from in society? Whether it's news, whether it's think, you know, we have to look on how many of you are online ten times as much as you are reading the Bible or reading a spiritual book or spending time listening to God. That's where we find our contamination, contamination from the world happening. Is it the substance of the world? And, I mean, I, I can raise my hand on most of those too. It's so easy to fall into society and the world. And yet, that's where our contamination comes, and then we start to wonder, why do I feel bad? Why do I... Why do I, why am I struggling to understand things? Why am I, why, why, why? We need to go back as, where is our purity? Where are we drawing our strength and our knowledge from? Society or from God? We have to work at being pure. And light is similar. It talks about you are to be the light of the world to stay focused and pure. Oswald Chambers, um, I read a daily devotion uh, that he does, I've read it for years, and he said this about light. He said, light cannot be soiled. You may try to grasp a beam of light with the sootiest of hands, but you leave no mark on the light. A sunbeam shining in the grit a grimiest, grimiest room in the slums of a city cannot be soiled. The purity of light. But what can happen is that we can be distracted from seeing that purity of light. We can be distracted and lose our focus. When we keep our saltiness and our focus on light, we do it by spending more time with God. And each of you today, either here or online watching, each of you has made an intentional commitment to be conspicuous, to, be, to really put that salt and light first, to listen for God, to say, I need God. You're intentionally making time. And during the week when you make time to pray or read the Bible or just have some quiet time to listen, you are intentionally making that time. And that's important because it leads us then to, to the reason for the salt and light. What is the purpose of our salt and light? The purpose is to show off. The purpose is to show off. In scripture, it talks about you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. The you is plural. It's not talking about us so much individually, although we have to work at it individually, but it is talking about that we are part of something bigger. We are part of the kingdom of God. We are part of this Jesus movement. We are part of, of something much bigger than ourselves. Much bigger than ourselves. And we have been charged. When we said we believe in Jesus Christ, we have been charged at that point to make a difference in the world, to show off to show Jesus off to the world. To fulfill the purpose that each of us has been called for. The mission of God, Christ in the world. 
Now, in the United Methodist Church, that is to make transformation of the world through Jesus Christ. So if each one of us, as part of a larger community of faith, is called to be salt and light, the bottom line is we can't be like anybody else. We can't be part of the crowd, part of the herd. We have to be Jesus' children. We can't be like others. Israel was called from the beginning to the chosen community, the chosen people. And they were called to be the salt and the light in the world. And if you look at some of the Old Testament scriptures, it talks about Israel being the salt and the light. But something happened. They started behaving like everybody else. And so Jesus came. Israel lost their distinctive flavor. And Jesus has come and called us. And it is important that we don't lose that distinctive flavor either. That we show off. That we take that light that's within us. And make a difference in the people around us, in the world, in our communities. We are called to be light bearers. Light bearers whose light goes into the darkest corners. Light bearers whose light goes into places where people have no hope. Where they feel like they're invisible and nobody sees or hears them anymore. The light of Christ that conquers that darkness through us for each one of us. The light of God is in each of us. And we have baskets too. Remember in the scripture it talks about don't hide your light under a basket? Well, we all have baskets. All of us. You may be saying, no, no, no. We all have baskets. What are those baskets made up that we hide under? Maybe there are insecurities, our frustrations, our self-ambitions, greed. Maybe it's our sense of we know right, our self-interest. And we take this basket and we put it over us. And we start to hide the light of Christ that's wanting to come out. We all have issues that are our baskets that we hide, hide under. And sometimes it gets harder and harder to look out, and we just want to pull those baskets farther and farther and farther down. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called to take the baskets off, to not hide, to be those light bearers. There's a real tension that comes from living in the world and living as Jesus calls us to live, as followers of Jesus. And all of us are living in that tension. And some days it just feels too much, doesn't it? Some days you're just like, oh, and we just want to get that ba ba basket and pull it down and hide. But Christ is saying, let me help take it off. Let me help you. Let me help you shine. Let me help you show what I can do in the world through you. One test that we can all do to determine if the light of God is, is truly in our life and if it's genuine is we can ask ourselves, has God really changed the things that matter to me? As I have become a follower of Christ, 
Christ, have the things that matter to me changed? Or am I still the things that matter still the same? That's something all of us have to struggle with. Has Jesus changed the things that matter in life to you? And if you say, you know, some days yes, and some a lot of days no, then how can you stay connected more, fall back into that light, draw from the light and the saltiness of Christ by staying focused, going back and reconnecting I was listening uh, at a virtual conference yesterday, and and uh, the woman, Christine, said something that some sermon was on my mind. She said that we are all um, lights, like all of our communities of faith. So we think about this church in Roseland or wherever you may be, that you start with that light. And when it's dark, do you see the pinpoints of light going out from it? Or does the light just stay right there? Or are the pinpoints of light going out from Roseland United Methodist Church? Going out and making a difference where people can see genuine faith at work in which Jesus Christ makes a difference. We are the salt and the light. We are called. Do we say okay? Or do we pull the basket down low? Let's pray. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for never giving up on us. <laughs> Boy, there's so many times I'd give up on me, Lord. But you never do, and you never give up on any of us here. Help us to stay connected to you, to truly be conspicuous, to show off what you in our lives, the difference that is made. Show off in a way that others truly will be open to receiving you in their life as well. Amen. I'm going to close the service this morning with Friend of God. No, it's not. I need a drummer.
It's amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. So amazing, Lord. You are my friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. You've got a new week in front of you, right? I'm giving you permission to go out and show off, all right? You can be a, well, a little obnoxious, maybe, but be conspicuous, all right? Show off your faith. Everybody, amen? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And all God's people everywhere said, Over there and give you a couple. Of-